Today's episode of Outside the Rack is brought to you by Kinetic Performance, the makers of the gym aware. In today's world of strength and conditioning, data collections become the utmost of importance, and that's exactly where gym aware separates itself from the competition. Because when we're sitting there and looking to collect data, what data are you actually collecting? And are the numbers you're looking at fitting into the exercises that you're utilizing? And even more so, are they going to answer the questions that you're looking for? Looking at different ways that you are moving the barbell through peak and mean, both velocity and power, is really what separates gym aware from the competition. Being able to understand what your ballistic exercises are doing separate to what your strength exercises are doing really allows you to program at a much more specific level for your athletes. So hop on over to kinetic.com.au to see what Evan and his team have in store for you today. The world of strength and conditioning is filled with some fantastic practitioners that are always searching for more. But more what? What are strength and conditioning coaches searching for to better their ability to prepare their athletes? Well, what about cutting edge information or a place where you can find different opinions from forward thinking coaches on what you're doing, how you're doing, and try to get feedback to be better for your athletes? Or what about a place where you'll find like-minded coaches that can provide solid coaching advice and career development for you as you progress through your career as a strength and conditioning professional? Well, this is exactly why we built the Strength Coach Network. You'll have access to exclusive monthly content on top of the sensationally active forum that we have where you can communicate with coaches all over the world to find those answers that you're looking for to help you be a better practitioner for your athletes. So make sure you hop on over to strengthcoachnetwork.com slash CVASPS, that's strengthcoachnetwork.com slash CVASPS, and get your 48-hour trial for only a dollar. I look forward to seeing you in the Strength Coach Network. What's up, everybody, and welcome to the 46th episode of Outside the Rack, brought to you by Kinetic Performance, the makers of Gym Aware. In this show, we're just going to try to dive a little deeper into the minds of some of the top practitioners in the world of sport performance to learn a little bit more about who they actually are and how they got to where they are today. Today, we are joined by Anatomy at 1220's Mark Magna. Mark, thanks for being with us, buddy. Thank you, Coach DeMeo. It's exciting, man. Very, very exciting. I'm, I'm, I'm stumbling over my words already. We just started, but you're a hard act to follow. I'm gonna try to stick with you. I feel like um, I am a newbie in Hollywood on going on with Letterman. I'm nervous. I'm nervous. Oh, it's always great to see you, man. I'm excited to have you here. I'm glad things are doing well down in Florida. But, you know, before we get going too far, who is Mark Magna? Mark Magna is a washed up, uh, I'm kind of kidding. Um, Mark Magna is from southeastern Massachusetts, went to the University of Richmond, which was a, uh, an absolute blessing. Uh, was drafted by the New York Jets, uh, played for the Patriots, the Bengals, then went on to play in the CFL, then moved to Miami, uh, did strength and conditioning uh, at a performance facility, then at a corporate facility. Now he has his, uh, three of his own facilities with his business partners and is uh, very fortunate to be in Miami, uh, married to a beautiful wife named Melanie Tilbrook. Uh, who's incredible, and that's it. I have two amazing dogs. I love my life. I love my work, and I love uh, connecting with friends like yourself. So that's the quick version. Well, I appreciate it, man. And let's not forget an author, guy who's oh, yeah. got a great podcast. Yeah, thank and, you. Uh, thank you. And a pretty awesome movie. Yeah. Um, once again, the, the thank you, Jay, for the book. The book is called Dream Big, Never Quit. I always wanted to write a book. And the only reason I wanted to write a book is because I had that first grade teacher tell me I was awful at writing. So there you go. <laughs> um, also, um, the movie, the movie was by, is by Randy West of Monarch Productions. In all seriousness, anyone who's listening, see the movie if you're a coach because the movie's about all the coaches that helped me through my entire life. And my father wasn't present in my life. I didn't get to know him, um, but I had a lot of wonderful, amazing men who were coaches. My mom 
uh, if you're so if you're a coach, if you're a parent, if you're a teacher, educator, student, student athlete, you're a victim of bullying. Just see the movie. It's called Just a Kid from Fall River. You can see it on Google Play, iTunes, Amazon. Just a Kid from Fall River by Randy West, who worked so incredibly hard on this movie for five years and got interviews from all over the country and Canada. And he absolutely crushed it, crushed it. So I think you'll appreciate it if you have a goal or, or a dream and, and it's getting hard for you. Just watch the movie. You'll love it. Thank you, Coach Tomeo. Yeah, no, it was awesome. And, you know, I obviously have to give Randy a shout out, not just for the awesome work you did with that, but, you know, he's done a lot to help us with CVASPs. He's a guy that if you have been at CVASP that's been back there with the camera. Uh, and he, he also is a heck of a training partner, you know, like. He, yeah. <laughs> oh, man, he's, that guy's been through it, man. He, he could tell you, that should be a documentary. Oh yeah, about training in the early mornings, man. Oof. Oh, I bet. Yeah, no doubt about it. But listen, man, like it, you're also a guy, you know, who's a huge student, not just of our game, but was a huge student of football, a huge student of just human development. You know, I, I remember when you were in the CFL learning how to swim, you know, just always trying to yeah. find ways to get better and expand and grow. So I'm really excited to hear this one. Oh, if man, you wouldn't I'm mind excited. describe Please. a learning situation that brought about an epiphany in your career. Okay, so this is a wonderful question, Coach DeMeo. So thank you. Um, you know what comes to mind immediately we all have, I mean, a long list of these. Um, mine is, is actually recent. Last year, I was at a place in my life where for the last 20 years of my life, I get up at 4 a.m., 3.30 a.m., go to work, crush it, grind, you know, push yourself. And my whole life was about getting the respect of the people around me. Um, working hard, putting in the effort, great effort, great enthusiasm, great energy, doing everything I could. But I almost started to get bitter and sour, as I think a lot of us may at times in our lives. And I started to, it started to compromise some of my close friendships and relationships, uh, you know, with my family and then with my business partners and a, a good friend who is also a business partner said, you need to uh, go away. That's basically what he said. And I said, well, what do you mean? He said, dude, you're not, you, this is not good. Like what's going on right now? Like the way I was behaving just wasn't good. It wasn't like, it's hard to describe coach. Like I was just turning, like my personality wasn't turning for the good. It was just not, it was turning like not good, like kind of pessimistic, a bit nasty. And it's really not who I am. So he went a year before that and had continued to go to a thing called, uh, I don't know, I'm sure you've heard of this, but this is a bit out there. It's crazy. It's called the Vipassana meditation retreat. And he said, you need to go. And I already knew that when he said that, I was like, uh oh, because I'm one of those guys that says, I don't need that shit. I'm centered. I'm good. I'm in a good place in my life. And once you get to the Vipassana meditation retreat, what they tell you is that if you say that I'm good and I don't need it, that means you need to go. Because you're not in a place to understand that it's for anybody at any time and it offers incredible value. What it is, it's a 10 day, silent retreat in the woods, no talking, no eye contact, no gestures, no phones, no email, no text, no social media, no writing, no eating, no uh, reading materials, no magazines, no books, nothing. You meditate for 10 hours a day and you basically try to find yourself and think about your life and it was the best one of the best experiences one of the best experiences of my life of life the best growth experience of my life and i'm going to be completely honest 
it was one of the hardest things I've ever done. Like you're, you're, it's volunteer only. You don't have to be there. It's free by the way. And there's a long list of people who want to go. Jack Dorsey, uh, CEO of Twitter goes several times a year. Um, the first time you go, you have to go for 10 days. There's no shorter one. And there's actually a long list waiting list to get in because it's such a popular, impactful experience. And it changed my life. My wife will tell you, it's like, it's night and day. My business partners are like, it's night and day. It, they've never seen anything like it. I don't tell people to go. I just say, just pay attention to my behavior. And they're like, I got to get some of that on me, you know? So the epiphany was that what they teach you is our whole life, we're, we're focused on what's happening externally. Watch out for the cars. Don't get hit by the cars. Pay attention to that guy. Make sure he doesn't harm you. Listen to what that woman said. Make sure that you understand what she's saying so you don't do this wrong or, or focus on all of these things when we, we never take a good look of what's going on inside ourselves. And when you spend 10 hours in meditation, things come out of you that you wouldn't believe. And a lot of the truth is, Coach, that a lot of people don't want to go I've heard that many times because they just don't want to deal with their stuff. They say that. They say, I, I really don't want to go because I, I, I'm not prepared to deal with those things. And, you know, even the team at Anatomy, they, they say it's, he's very different, you know. So um, that's what I can share with you. It changed my life in the most crazy topsy-turvy way but all for the positive it's just different perspective you know um it, and it opens your eyes to a lot of things that you know, we always talk about self-awareness you heard the story about the uh the kid at the border with the two sandbags no you hear that story this is no. a great story so you need to hear it it's a perfect time to tell it you're a coach how old are you coach 41. You're 41. I'm 43. I know you've seen a lot of things. You're very experienced. I have a great deal of respect for Coach Jay DeMeo. He's a great human being, but he's also an amazing coach. And when we get to a place in life, we have so much experience. We kind of think, not that we know everything, but we've seen pretty much it all, right? <laughs> seen a lot of stuff. And I know it's always about white belt mentality and I have so much to learn, but there's always a part of us that thinks that we know more than actually we know. We, you don't know what you don't know. So anyway, there's this kid that goes to a border every day. He's on a bicycle. He's about 14 years old. And he's got two big sandbags, right? And he gets to the border and the, and the cops go, search those bags because we know there's drugs in them and we're going to catch this kid. They search the bags, look up at the captain. They go, captain, there's nothing in here but sand. They let him through. Kid comes back the next week, boom, sandbags. Check them out. Nothing but sand. This kid does this for like seven, eight years. Keeps going through, keeps going through, keeps going through. Well, when the captain goes to retire, he has a party at this local bar, and the kid's there, little Billy. It's on the bike. He turns around, he looks at Billy, he says, Billy, come over here. I want to buy you a drink. I'm retiring, so it doesn't matter now, but I want you to, I want to know what was in those sandbags. What were you smuggling? The kid looks up at him and says, bicycles <laughs> so so awesome. the, the, the whole thing is that we really believe that we're so aware of what's going on around us and we're smart and we're in the know and we can see things and it's right in front of us but we can't see it and going to the Vipassana meditation was like this has been right in front of you your whole life and you've chosen to ignore it this is something that's huge and if you care about yourself, the relationships with others, you'll want to be a better human being. And like, you're going to be a better man, woman, like friend, significant other, coach. It was just changed my life. And that whole Vipassana experience was like the kid with the bicycle right there. Like I've been seeing this same thing has been playing in front of me. And I'm like, yeah, that's great. That's great. That's great. But we're not aware. It just makes you hyper aware of what's going on. So it's pretty rad, I, man. Yeah, it was wild. It was wild. That's pretty rad. Are so you, when you want to go, coach, let me know. 
<laughs> do you ever see yourself going back? I would go back. I would, and, and here's the thing, like, who's going to sign up for 10 days where they have to completely disconnect from the world? Like, dude, I don't know. It was during football season. I was like, at one point, there was a car outside, a truck, and guys was in a sports radio. I was going on a walk outside, and I was trying to lean into the car so I could hear the, the scores because I don't even know what's going on in the world. Like, my wife could have been dead. I have no idea. And I said, honey, if you need anything, call the center. They'll let you, you know, pass a message, you know, or if something happens, of course you can leave. Right. But I was, I was nervous, man. I'm like the, the first day I'm like, oh, this is no problem. You know, what if my wife needs me? What if the dogs need me? And then the third day coach, I'm thinking, wait a minute, what if I die here? What if I die in the woods here? I don't want to go out in the woods at a meditation retreat. That's ridiculous. Right. So it's like this whole series of panic that you just need to get out of your system and then start to, you kind of like, you really start to expand your vision. It, it sounds crazy, but you got to experience it. You really got to experience it. And, and they say the third day is hard, the fourth day is hard, and the sixth day people leave. Every day is hard. Every day is hard. So check it out. It's wild. Anyone listening, Vipassana Meditation Retreat. 10 days away, uh, it was an incredible experience that just helped me be a better husband, friend, coach, person. I hope anyway, I believe, I think. That's pretty awesome, dude. That's yeah. pretty awesome. Yeah. Well, this will be kind of a good follow-up to that then because, you know, mm -hmm. taking a step back and being out of there and really learning about yourself. If there was one question that Mark could ask and he knows – he would get the answer to it. What would that question be and why? So I, when I saw this question, this is a, another great question. When I saw this question, I was thinking, I know they want something incredibly, I know Jay wants something incredibly specific, but my aunt, quick answer was, am I doing it right? Like, am I doing it right? Like, I get up, I'm not trying to win any awards. I'm not trying to be a tough guy or old school or like the hardest worker. I'm not trying to get the award, but I actually like waking up early. I wake up like sometimes 3.30. Uh, it's usually in between 3.30 and 4. Uh, I go into work. I work with an incredible team at Anatomy. I work hard all day. I sacrifice some time with my family. I don't know if that's the best way sometimes, you know? Like, but... The next thing that someone asks you is, wait a minute, you probably wouldn't have gotten to where you are if you, if you worked that hard. I say, correct, that's correct. So well, why would you change anything? I said, I didn't say I would, but my question would be, am I doing it right? Like, you know, you don't think about waking up at 3.30 a.m. when you're 90 on your deathbed. You think about your wife, you think about your significant other, you think about your family, you think about your friends, you think about all those things you didn't do, right? So I just pray and hope that I'm doing it right because I'm only in this because I have the ability to impact others in a positive way, as you do. I've seen the way you work. You're, the way you work with athletes, you're incredible. You are. You're an incredible coach. You're an incredible person. And that's why you do it. I know that. So hopefully I'm doing it right and this is right and we all have our own different definitions of what's right so I pray that I'm doing it right you know that's a great question there because it's you know like you said you probably want something specific but that is specific and broad at the same time because it's, it yeah. encompasses just about everything yeah yeah but as yeah. a guy who has three gyms played in the NFL, won a CFL championship, wrote a book, you know, great wife, awesome dogs, really kicking butt, doing great things. You know, other than 10 days in the woods, what is Mark's escape? Oof, you got three killer questions here, coach. Uh, you know, I think, I only get one. I got. I got to let me. Let me. Well, let if me you got a couple, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I'll throw a few at you. So, 
this morning, I know it sounds ridiculous. There's the first one, not so much. Yes, the first one. It's a lot of, it's mostly the second one, but I'm going to share the first one with you. So my wife doesn't know. She kind of knows this, but this morning I had to do a 2K for time. And when I do a 2K for time, I'll wake up at like 3 a.m. All my clothes are ready. They're on the table. Everything's ready, right down to my hydration and whatever I'm going to drink. My green, my matcha tea is ready, everything. So when I get up, it's like less than, it's like less than 20 minutes, maybe 17 minutes to get out of the house. Then I'm at anatomy, turn all the lights on, make sure everything's organized, set the music, set up the rower, set up my plan on the, on the board, the grease board. That time alone and figuring out what is Mark Magna made out of for that six minutes and 22 seconds, like that is what my escape is. Because when I'm doing that, when I'm three minutes in and I'm really, really getting a, a good deep look at what I'm made out of, like there's no feeling like that. And I'm not saying it's pleasant, but for some reason that's, and I'm not, that's not necessarily where I'm most comfortable with that, but Jay, that's where I am most me. That's where I am most me. And that is like an escape. There is no other escape like that. When you're three minutes into that bad boy, nothing matters and you are, it's, you're in or you're out and we're going to find out what you made out. Coach Cullen used to say, Mark, see this? I don't know what you got in there. We're going to find out. We're really going to find out. And we find out three minutes into that thing. So that's the first one. But just that alone time and then, you know, when I'm pushing myself and doing things that people would say, well, why in the hell would you do that? I don't know. The answer, Jay, is I don't know. But I do know that that's where I feel most comfortable. Secondly, when I'm with my wife and with our, our two dogs, we have two rescue dogs that are just incredible. They're so loving. They're, they're just goofballs, but they're amazing. And it's like the two dogs and my wife, we're on the couch, we're outside. It just feels like the most natural good thing I've ever experienced in my life. And my wife is, she's from Hawaii. She's very chill. She's a great human being. She's a great human being. And she's just good, you know? And she's always the one like this, you know, in, in life, like, well, you don't want to say, I'm sorry, or I was wrong. Like, I find myself saying I was wrong, and I'm sorry with her all the time, just because I always want to be better for her, you know? So I'm just very lucky, because as we all know, it's hard to find people like that in life, and uh, I hit the jackpot with her, so. And the dogs. <laughs> the dogs, yeah. yeah. No, man, that that dark place from 700 to about 15, 1600 in those two Ks <laughs> is, yeah, like finding what you have in here and in here. And yeah, no, I'm, I'm, wild, man. I'm picking wild. up what you're putting down there, brother. That's for sure. Yeah. Cause there's a, uh, yeah, I think that's what you could call it, right? It's just the dark place right there. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Some people smile through it, man. Some people smile through it. And I'm like, this is like, look, let's, let's be honest. It's not great, but it's also not that bad. Like the fact that we still get to go there, it's like the most cool high like you ever get. It really is, you know? Oh, yeah. I appreciate it. Man. Yeah, dude. And it's, it's, that's a good one for me too. But listen, brother, I truly appreciate you taking the time out. Glad to see you. Glad you're doing great, man. And, and we'll be in touch real dude, soon. Are you, let me take a picture of this so I can throw it up there. Coach DeMeo, it's an honor, man. Once again, I know Coach DeMeo is not big at taking compliments, but he is one of the best I've ever known. He's a great human being and an incredible coach, and uh, got lots of love for you, Coach DeMeo. So thank you so much for helping me out so much as you continue to do, and uh, you're incredible, man. All the kids and athletes are lucky to have you. Thank you. 
Appreciate that, Mark. And it's always great to see you, brother. We'll be in touch soon. All right, Coach. Have a great one. Cheers. Bye-bye. Cheers.